Hey, 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 what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna do like a productive vlog. I have a bunch of stuff to get done today and I'm gonna take you guys with me. And throughout the video, I'm gonna give you little tips on how I personally like to stay productive. For starters, I have to get some bread prepped to bake today because starting tomorrow, I am doing a seven day meal plan. And you're actually gonna see that video next and it's gonna be on Saturday the 14th. So make sure you are subscribed and your notifications are turned on so you do not miss that video when it goes live because it's gonna be a full seven days of meals for me and my husband on a budget. I took a poll over on Instagram about three weeks ago, I think, asking what everyone would like for a budget for that video. And after the poll went up and it was up for 24 hours, I got a good idea of how much to budget for to help you all out as well. So I'm gonna show you everything in that video, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and I have to get prepared and be productive today to set us up for success for next week. And not only do I need to make bread, I have to clean my entire house. So you're gonna see how I can stay productive with a very short window of time so let's go. We have enough things to do. We don't need to be sitting here and chatting. Come on. As you may know by now, I love making bread and I decided this day to make two loaves to kind of get a jump start on the week ahead. And I can always make more later in the week, but this way it's already pre-made. I kind of had a schedule for the meal plan that I was chatting with you guys about. So I did a nutritional yeast Italian seasoning one. So it was like a cheesy Italian and I just did a regular traditional loaf. The traditional loaf I end up giving away. <laughs> so I made it ahead to help myself out, but then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna gift this loaf of bread. So anyways, I ended up making another one the next day. But hey, I was able to make six loaves of bread with this one thing of flour. Anyways, if you've never made homemade bread, this is the easiest one to start with. Three cups of water, a teaspoon of salt, some seasonings if you wanna add it in, a cup and a half of warm water, you mix it together, you let it sit. If you have the quick active yeast, you can let it sit for one hour. It's even better if you let it sit for longer just because that yeast just kind of has time to really rise and really blossom, but it still works out really good. You still have a really crusty, chewy loaf of bread if you let it sit for an hour, so it's completely up to you and your time frame. A lot of times I will make these loaves at night and let them sit overnight if you have a warm house, it will also rise a little faster. With bread making, the biggest thing I like to tell people who've never made bread before, it's really, really easy to follow a recipe, but depending on the climate you live in, that recipe may or may not work out, which I think sometimes scares people because I have people that will tag me over on Instagram and be like, okay, I made your bread, but it was so sticky. And then I just let them know like, hey, you just need a little bit more flour. You might live in a really humid climate I live in a really dry climate, so my bread tends to be a little bit drier. Um, and you just kind of kind of go with trial and error, but you're not gonna mess it up. If it's sticky, add a little bit more flour. If it's really, really dry, add a little bit more water. And as you can see, when I add my water, I add a little at a time, and I'll show you here real quick. I didn't even add the cup and a half because I know what my bread's supposed to look like. Um, the crock pot bread I made a couple weeks ago, I added two cups of water because that was the recipe and I just assumed it needed more water because it was going in the crock pot, so it was super, super sticky. But the next time I made it, I made it with a cup and a half and it was fine. So this dough is a little bit drier. Yes, it could have added more water, but again, I know what it should look like. And sometimes when you add seasonings into this dough, it tends to be a little bit drier. And you'll see my rise really isn't that great. My kitchen was kind of chilly this morning. It's just because we don't have any carpet in our downstairs. We do have higher ceilings. And on a chilly morning, our downstairs is sometimes chilly because it's just the way I have my heat set, the preference of my house. You could definitely, like I said, move it to a warmer room if you want a better rise. But my bread turned out perfect. And I think it's really, really important to share with you guys different kinds of weather making bread so you don't see that my bread always looks the same. As you can see, it's a little bit dry. I liked it that way. I knew it was perfect by the texture of it. I let it rest for about an hour, let it rise. Like I said, you can do it overnight, six to eight hours, whichever works for you. While my bread is rising, it's time to be super productive. A huge, huge tip that I can give to you is to set to yourself some timers. It'll help you stay on track, but be reasonable with your timers. If something's gonna take you an hour, don't set a timer for 15 minutes. I like to give myself a little bit of leeway because usually I'm filming and I'm doing other things and sometimes things pop up. So for the bread, I gave myself 30 minutes. I think I used 20. <laughs> Anyways, a little out of breath because I ran up and down the stairs three times. 
that's how I get my steps in. But we're gonna start some laundry. I have to do the bedding today. I have a whole list of things. I'll pop it up here on the screen and we'll check it off as we go. But definitely, if you're someone who needs to stay on task because you're trying to get something done in a time frame, set yourself some timers. I like to use G-O-O-G-L-E and I have her set right now for one hour. That way I can get everything done upstairs while my bread is rising. I love starting a quick load of laundry usually first thing in the morning because it's something that's like a passive chore. You can throw it in and it's like forget about it. I also am obsessed with our new laundry detergent. I'll talk about that in an upcoming video. I am super pumped to share with you an awesome budget-friendly option that I have found and you guys are going to love. As you know, we do have a Helix sleep bed and it's been about 75 days since we got it and I thought it would be really good to do a quick overall what we think of it review because I do get quite a few questions on it. I brought the man, the myth, the legend. I brought my husband Joe on because it's both of our mattress. And since we've had it for 75 days, I thought it'd be really good to reintroduce Helix and also let you know what we thought sleeping on it for the last few months. What do you think of it? Honestly, it's one of the softest beds we've ever owned. I've gotten some great sleep. Miranda comments on how much I snore. <laughs> so obviously I'm getting some great sleep and we absolutely love it. We love it. So we're both side sleepers and we used to both have lower back and hip pain. And honestly, we both thought it was age, right? Because we're 35 and we thought, you know what, we're getting old. But in 75 days, I have not woken up with any lower back or hip pain. And I attribute that all to Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep creates premium mattresses customized to fit your sleep needs. And conveniently, they ship right to your door for free within the US. Their sleep quiz will match you to your perfect mattress. Everyone's different and Helix knows that. So they made a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Personally, I'm a side sleeper, so is my husband. He prefers a really soft, squishy bed. Like I said, I can go with anything, but spending a few nights on this Helix mattress has been a game changer. I always just assumed I was supposed to wake up with lower back pain because I was old. Based on our quiz results, Helix matched us with the Helix Sunset Luxe mattress. And after sleeping on it for a few nights, I'm gonna tell you they matched us correctly. I thought lower back pain was a thing I had to have because I was getting old. Turns out I was on the wrong mattress. And if it makes you nervous to purchase something that you haven't tried, Helix has a 100 night sleep trial. So you get more than three months to make sure you actually love it. Helix mattresses actually have a 10 year warranty and they offer financial options and flexible payment plans. So a great night's sleep is never far away. It will come conveniently shipped directly to your door in a large box. All you have to do is set it on the bed, open up the box, Roll out the mattress, it's super easy. My husband and I did it in like 10 minutes. It was awesome. Visit helixsleep.com slash flourishing Miranda to get up to $200 off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. We know you're going to enjoy Helix sleep as much as we do. Make sure you check them out for your perfect night's sleep. I'm loving sharing some productivity tips with you. One very helpful tip that I know most of us already know, but it's to multitask with your chores. If you have an hour while you're meal prepping, you can also do laundry. You can also be tidying your kitchen. While you're in your kitchen, you can wipe down your surfaces. If you can think of two things to do rather than one, that doesn't stretch you in a fact that like <laughs> you're going to be super stressed out and like obviously you're not going to be vacuuming your car while you're also washing your windows. Do you know what I mean? But some things just go hand in hand and however you set that up to multitask for yourself, I think can be really convenient and easy. I only do laundry on the weekends. My husband will usually do a load on Wednesday evenings, but typically we do it all the time when we're multitasking and then we set time away throughout the weekend to do all of our chores. Another thing, I feel like our cell phones, maybe, maybe it's just me because I do a lot of social media stuff. You can see my phone is in my back pocket here, but I intentionally do not take it out when I'm cleaning. Sometimes I will make one Instagram story or one Instagram post, most of the time it's in my back pocket, I have my earphones in and I'm listening to a podcast or I'm catching up on a book that I'm listening to or kind of being productive in that way just to kind of keep myself engaged but not where I'm checking my phone all the time. I set timers on Google intentionally so that way I'm not constantly looking at my phone because it can be such a distraction. Let me know if you're distracted by your phone or if it's something that's not 
as common for you just because you're not on social media that much. So productivity number four is to assign certain tasks to specific days. Like I said, I don't do much cleaning over the weekdays, but I do do small tasks every single day. So that way I don't have to do everything on the weekend, but I'm not going to clean my entire house on a Monday when I'm working a 14 hour day because it's not going to be productive for me. So depending on what your weekly schedule is like, you can be the most productive if you assign certain days and then change it as your schedule changes. Or instead, if your schedule is like mine and it kind of stays the same, you can go ahead and keep it like that every single week and then make sure you stay diligent to get those tasks done as they need to get done and you're not skipping things around. Sure, there's things like vacations and stuff that come up so you might, you know, move tasks. But if you're home, make sure those days, those specific tasks are getting done because then you're going to be super productive because every single day something's getting done. Okay, in the last... 50-ish minutes. I've gotten all three of my bathrooms cleaned, all of my floors cleaned, the bathroom and the hardwood downstairs. My husband vacuumed upstairs, tidied. I got two loads of laundry going. So one is currently in the dryer, one is in the washer. I got the bedding changed. I feel really, really good about my to-do list today. So I have about 10 minutes. Like I said, I like to give myself a little extra time for tasks and we're looking pretty good on the to-do list. So let's go downstairs, check on our bread and get that into the oven. This bread could not be any easier to make. You go ahead and preheat your oven to 450 degrees, and then you're gonna actually pop your bread pan in. Here, I'll explain it to you. Okay, we're doing two different kinds of breads, and I'm not going to do my Dutch oven because I wanna show a couple different methods. So, into the preheating oven, we're going to put one of these bread pans and one glass baking dish. If you have a Dutch oven, you can go ahead and add the bottom, not the lid of your Dutch oven into your oven and let that preheat. It makes it so that it gets nice and hot and then the bread doesn't stick. You don't need any additional oils or sprays and you get a nice crispy, crunchy crust, which is perfect for soups and toast and bread and croutons and literally everything. And I don't need my bread. I just kind of fold it like an envelope. I saw that on YouTube once and I absolutely love it. The texture of my bread is Perfect. It may not look like it got a huge rise. It doesn't matter. I know what it's supposed to feel like. I know what it's supposed to look like, and this is perfect. So this one I'm making into a quote unquote traditional style loaf, like a loaf you would buy at the grocery store that you would slice up. It's kind of that rectangular shape. And then the traditional loaf that's like unflavored, it's just like a traditional white bread. I'm actually making that in a round loaf. And I think these both turned out so beautiful. You're gonna see at the end. But again, I kind of fold it like an envelope or in four. It was told an envelope, but now that I'm looking at it, I can't see the envelope. So <laughs> anyways, and I kind of roll this one up into a ball and kind of pinch it under. You can also do a second rise if you want to. It's totally not necessary because it's ready to go. And then all I'm going to do is pat it a little bit because I think it's fun. <laughs> You don't have to do this because you are going to plop it into the pan. But these are looking so good already. And I love the way that my kitchen smells when I'm making yeasty breads, even though I don't enjoy it anymore. I know what this bread tastes like. I ate it every single day during our debt payoff journey. I feel like we always made it. I make it now for my husband. So once my oven's preheated, I go ahead and take my pans out. And for this one, I'm doing a lid with another bread pan. It's great. It worked for me for almost a year when I was making this bread and I didn't have a Dutch oven. Pop it in the oven for 30 minutes, then take the lid off for an additional 15. And then go ahead with this one, I'm gonna put it in a glass baking dish just to show a different method. And then you're gonna cover it with just a piece of aluminum foil. It doesn't have to be on there tight or anything. You just kinda of make sure it's a little bit on there so it can kinda of steam a little bit like a lid. Put, pop that in there for 30 minutes. And then 30 minutes later, you're gonna take them out, take the lids off, put them back in for 15 minutes. If you have not made this bread, you are missing out. You need to make it ASAP. Ooh, so pretty. Look how perfect. I love this split right here. It makes me so happy. I love the little dusting of flour. So here's my traditional loaf, and here's my round loaf. As you can see, this one is a little bit crispier already, but no need to worry. They're gonna go back in for 15 minutes and get nice and crispy on the top, and then they're gonna fully cool and be ready to eat. Let me know in a comment below, are you so excited to get into your kitchen and start baking bread? If you guys haven't seen the pull apart pizza bread that Kale Junkie shared not too long ago, I highly recommend trying it. That's what I made the round loaf with. I made a pizza bread for my neighbors and they loved it. It was a huge hit. They had a party the other night. 
It was awesome. So I highly recommend giving that a try. It would be a great dinner. You could stuff it with whatever the heck you wanted. Um, I'm thinking about making it with like an olive loaf. I don't know. We like olives. I feel like olives are hit or miss. You either hate them or you, you love them. On to another chore dishes. Again, this is something that obviously is not like a productivity tip, but as I'm meal prepping and filming, I'm also washing my dishes. I'm like putting them in the sink and washing as I go versus like waiting to the end. Depending on what I'm doing, like the Thanksgiving meal video I did, I obviously waited to the end because I just had so many things to do. But oftentimes I have things that are sitting around that I can just quickly rinse and put in my dishwasher. So I like to leave my spaces better then I left, then I found them, if that makes sense. I think this is a really good way to stay productive so you're never behind. I was asking my husband about this, and it's kind of like if you're going to get ready in the bathroom in the morning, instead of leaving all your makeup out and like not washing the countertop, like every single time you leave it out, and then after a week, the countertop's all dirty and you have to really, really scrub it. It's leaving a space better than you found it. I hope you enjoyed today's video, friends. It was a lot of fun to share with you my own personal, just kind of Saturday morning and how I'm staying productive today because, of course, my future self always thanks me for doing the things now instead of putting them off. I hope this video helped you out. If you have a tip on how you personally like to stay productive, leave it in the comments below. Share your knowledge. I'm sure everyone would really appreciate it. I know I will. I look for a lot of these types of videos and I usually play them when I am doing things around the house. I hope you guys have an awesome day. I'll see you Saturday in that meal plan video. Bye-bye.